Welcome back. Abortion is no longer a constitutional right in the United States after the Supreme Court overturned the 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling. The court said the 1973 decision was egregiously wrong from the start and its reasoning, it says, was exceptionally weak and with damaging consequences. That ruling by the Supreme Court today has brought to an end a half a century of constitutional protection of abortion rights and allows each state to now decide whether to allow or ban abortions. Okay, U.S. President Joe Biden has also been reacting in the last while. He's vowed to protect the rights of women in the United States. He says the Supreme Court's decision is problematic in a well-developed nation such as America. I know so many women are now going to face incredibly difficult situations. I hear you. I support you. I stand with you. The consequences and the consensus of the American people, core principles of equality, liberty, dignity, and the stability of the rule of law demand that Roe should not have been overturned. With this decision, the conservative majority of the Supreme Court shows how extreme it is how far removed they are from the majority of this country. It made the United States an outlier among developed nations in the world. That is the domestic reaction from the U.S. President Joe Biden tonight. There's also been global reaction from the Office of the High Commissioner of the United Nations, Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights specifically, who's tweeted that the Supreme Court ruling is a major setback for women's rights and gender equality. Access to safe and legal abortion is rooted in international human rights law and at the core of women and girls' ability to make their own choices about their bodies and lives. Amnesty International says abortion is a human right for everyone, everywhere. We will never stop fighting. And there's a final one here from Doctors for Choice in the UK, a, a pro-choice organization in the UK. We are devastated by today's decision by the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn the abortion ruling. We stand in solidarity with our USA colleagues on this terrible day for reproductive rights. Let's take this up now with the Honorary Professor at Wits University, Professor John Strimlau, about the political implications of this decision. Prof, you are from the United States. It's a country that you know well. Had you ever thought that 50 years after that historic Roe versus Wade ruling, we would be back here again? No, I didn't, but I, I, at the same time, appreciate that the constitutional arrangements that are democratic deficits that, uh, that uh, America is saddled with presents a situation politically that you're alluding to, whereby two-thirds of Americans do not want to see Roe v. Wade overthrown, and 50 Seven percent, I think, uh, believe that a woman's right to abortion is under all and every circumstance. And when Wendy Sherman, the deputy secretary of state um, and, uh, of the United States, was here in Johannesburg just a couple of months ago, she explicitly declared she was jealous of the South African Constitution, which enshrines the human right of a woman's right to choose or a man's right to choose. Sexual rights are personal liberty rights that should be protected. And unfortunately, in the United States, they are not. This court is very right wing, and it was appointed a majority that is now six to three was uh, three appointees of Donald Trump, who is himself being the subject of a congressional hearing that you know very well for his uh, uh, refusal to accept the certified results of the 2020 election. Mm -hmm. So it is a mess. So how progressive would you say the U.S. Constitution actually is, given that at some point one of the arguments that were brought forward against women's right to terminate a pregnancy was that at the initial drafting of the U.S. Constitution, that was a right that was not enshrined, and therefore allowing Roe versus Wade to be stayed, to stay as law would be making a constitutional provision for something that they say did not exist to begin with. 
at the founding well, of the country. You're, you're absolutely right. If you go back and read the 1973 decision, which was uh, seven to two uh, in favor of the Roe v. Wade, uh, it was a te Texas case. Uh, and and uh, they said then that that in, in the time of 1789, uh, no one thought of uh, abortion. Uh, it was not enshrined uh, as a um, uh, that is to say, the right to life was not enshrined in the Constitution in any way. Uh, and the convoluted logic. I've not read the. I have not had the time to read Justice Thomas's uh, majority opinion of this. But I have read some of the analysis, and not surprising, it's, it's riddled with contradictions because uh, this is a, a political decision by a right-wing, hardcore court that benefits from the Senate's procedures that are unfair to one person, one vote. Mm -hmm. So America has got to, you know, it's got a state capture problem on two levels. One, Donald Trump was... Um, uh, trying to uh, ignore the certified results of the 2020 election. That's a personal uh, a ploy for state capture. But the Republican Party, which is really rural and very conservative, is a minority of the voters, but a majority in the Electoral College and overweighted in the Senate. And that then allows them to appoint justices and use in the mess we're in. It's a terrible, terrible day for American democracy, compounded by the uh, by the by the, the court's ruling on guns. Mm -hmm. Just on the appointment of justices, in a concurring in a concurring opinion from Justice Clarence Thomas, he says that in fact that the Supreme Court should reconsider all of the court's substantive due process precedents, including Griswold, Lawrence, and another one that would refer to issues around contraception, same-sex relationships as well as same-sex marriage. And that's now been met in the last few hours by a reaction from activists who say, basically, the democratic gains of the United States are going to be undone in real time. So when President Joe Biden then speaks and says that he's going to fight on for the rights of women and make sure that this doesn't happen, how can he realistically do that? He can't realistically at the moment because his popularity, because of the inflation and rising costs of, of gasoline, which is what really concerns a majority of the voters, like in South Africa, uh, his popularity is only 39 percent. And that's a, 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 a dismal figure uh, in, in my book. However, however, there is perhaps a silver lining democratically to this that the Democrat, I've just received uh, 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 advertisements from the Democratic Party tonight saying we will take this issue to the voters in the 2020 congressional elections, which have been uh, overwhelmingly favoring the Republicans because of inflation and because of unhappiness with the, with the success of the uh, Biden administration economically, that they, they, will, they will appeal to and mobilize their base over this issue and over the ruling on guns and on the general um, drift toward uh, uh, protecting a president, a former president, by the Republican majority who lost clearly and certifiably the election, has challenged the basic precept of democracy as no president before him, and he appointed Amy Comey Barrett in two weeks at the end of his term when the Republicans stonewalled uh, uh, for seven months Barack Obama's uh, nomination of Merrick Golding, who's now Attorney General. Um, the, the, America's heading for a constitutional crisis. I can't tell you any other way, but at the same time, let's not lose sight of the fact that women have had a grievous blow taken to their human rights by this decision mm -hmm. of this court. So the activists then who say that they will put pressure on the politicians in Washington to do more to protect the rights of women to sexual reproductive health, i.e. the right to terminate a pregnancy for whatever reason across states in the U.S. Would action on the ground, protests, would that put sufficient pressure on the politicians then to act at that level? Well, it remains to be seen. You know, the only poll that is reliable is the one taken on Election Day, or at least until Trump challenged the results of the certified results of the 2020 election. 
And I do think that in the House of Representatives, which is population based, there is a chance to avoid the Republican takeover of the House. Uh, uh, if, 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 if this and other issues can somehow and, and perhaps the econ economy will recover a bit. Uh, <clears throat> but that is is uh, all question marks right now. It's a very tenuous moment. Um, but the Senate is also very narrowly split. And the Senate has uh, disproportionate weights to smaller states. A vote for a senator in California is, uh, is, is 40 times less powerful than a vote for a senator in Wyoming. Well, both states have, have two senators, even though they have very different population bases. This, this ruling is really against the population centers of the Northeast and the California, where, where uh, progressive uh, uh, voting, uh, progressive abortion rights will continue, uh, but they're under threat because the federal government has just pulled the rug out of Roe v. Wade. So President Barack Obama, like with the other Democrats in the United States, has tonight tweeted criticizing this outcome from the Supreme Court, this ruling. But why couldn't he, in his two terms, do something as president to make sure that we would not get to this point? Was there anything that could have been done? <laughs> Well, Barack Obama, uh, who I admire enormously, uh, came in in, in, a, in, a, in a miracle election in, in 2008, and he was reelected in 2012. But don't forget, in 2010, two years into his administration, people were initially unhappy. Now they're quite happy with Obamacare. But the Congress turned Republican in that by-election, and that – tied his hands. And so he had to do by executive action uh, a number of progressive things on environment and other things, which, of course, then Trump could just rewrite, which he did upon his election. Uh, I, I have to remind South Africans that uh, you have a real stake in who is president of the United States. And I hope that South African Americans and African Americans are mobilized really uh, heavily for this uh, uh, 2022 congressional and 2024 election. But don't forget Cyril Ramaphosa is in a similar bind to Joe Biden. I mean, Cyril uh, is, is uh, fighting a factional war as bitter within the ANC as Biden is uh, across the party lines in the U.S. And both men are facing uh, uh, huge obstacles that uh, politically – um, they probably contributed to themselves, but don't deserve to have um, the voters not given a chance to tell uh, uh, fairly and squarely who should be president and empower them to make the t tough decisions. Um, and, and that's not the case okay. in the United States, for sure. Professor John Sternlau, good to have your time as always, sir. Thank you. Thank you.